Yo, what's going on? This is Brian, the Jamaican, at your service. How are you? Um, as you can see, I'm. I looked. I look relaxed, you know, because I'm in uh, one of the rooms, and I am home, just recovering from the uh, patella tendon surgery that I recently got yesterday. Um, that was an interesting experience. Um, the staff was pretty cool. I think I was their last patient um, because it was pretty empty. Um, there wasn't a lot of activity and the lights were off in certain areas of the room. Um, so yeah, it was interesting. I didn't, I didn't really know what to expect, obviously. I was a little anxious because, you know, I've never had surgery done ever before on me. So this would be my first a surgery and um, so yeah they signed me in I had to fill out some paperwork um, oh let me show you my con little concoction here a little leg brace that I got a knee brace yeah so that is the knee brace um that I'm have strapped to my leg for the duration of this uh recovery process but I'm not able to shower yet I have to wait I think one or two more days because um of the stitching and the dressing that they put on the place where they did the surgery on my knee so I have to wait, I think, another day before I can actually shower because I'm, I'm actually feeling kind of mucky and dirty and I, I like taking showers and, f and feeling clean, smelling good. But it is now 1047 in the morning, so good morning. Um, it is September 13th. Um, I haven't really felt any pain, to be honest. They gave me some medicine, some pain medicine, oxycodone. Um, which has come in really handy because I was told that today I would be feeling some pain, but since I'm on, since I've been on top of the the medicine, I haven't felt much pain at all. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, when I was there, they signed me in and um, they they escorted me to the back where I was going to be dressing changing into the gown, the surgery gown that they gave me. I didn't even know how to put it on at first. I put it on backwards and then someone came into the room uh, and started like laughing at me because I was, didn't know what I was doing. And he was like, yeah, you gotta put this the other way. So the person assisted me with it. And I hopped onto the bed. Um, there was a patient before me since I think I said I was the last patient there for the day. There was a guy before me and I was in the waiting waiting area on that bed for about maybe 45 minutes so I decided to take a little nap um, and then they were ready for me so they started uh, in, they, they uh, injected the fluids in me the lady that was injecting uh, putting the uh, needle in my arm she couldn't even find my vein and she she pricked she pricked me and she put it in there but she started moving the needle around and I was just like hey okay yeah that that feels really weird. I think I need you to stop right now. And then she was like, I'm sorry. It's cool. I can't really seem to find your vein. And then so she had to take the needle out and uh, stick it into my the my hand where the veins are. And that's the really sensitive part. So, you know, she did that and she was able to find a vein. And then she gave me the little oxygen never had that shoved up my nose either so that was a little weird at first but I got used to it um, <clears throat> and then the anesthesiolo anesthesiologist came in and um, uh, it, it looked like a sonogram of sorts where he put this thing on my um, quad and he told me this is supposed to uh, help my quads to fire to at least move um, and then he stuck stuck this really long thick needle into my quad 
and there was a screen a monitor that he was looking at so I can see the inside of my quad and that was weird I was just like whoa this is feels so funny I mean it was a little painful but after a while you know once he was inside my quad I didn't really feel much pain until he started moving uh, the needle in the quad and it started getting really painful and but it wasn't like excruciating pain it just felt not normal it didn't feel feel right um, <clears throat> but yeah um, he did that and then they wheeled me into the uh, the OR operating room and took me from that bed put me on the operating table and um, they covered up they covered me up with more sheets got me situated um, and then the same anesthesiologist came into the room and um, uh, he was behind me and he put the oxygen not the oxygen the anesthesia mask <laughs> over my um, mouth and yeah I could taste the difference there was a taste because when I was breathing it in I can taste that that whatever chemical the anesthesia that was going inside of me it had a, a particular taste um, and then all of a sudden I didn't even know when I was knocked out I just remember waking up um, in the waiting area um, and there was a, a lady watching me and um, there was some uh, there were some juices and some cheeses that she gave me because obviously I couldn't eat anything uh, the night before at least after midnight the night before so I was hungry and and uh, a bit parched so <clears throat> I drank that and you know uh, she was telling me that um, I, I kept turning to my side because you know when you shift positions when you're sleeping you tend to want to shift a little bit to get comfortable so she just she told me I didn't know I was doing this but she told me that I just wanted I always wanted to turn on my side to go to sleep and she was like no you can't do that so she obviously tried to get me back laying on my back and <laughs> at, at, like I said I didn't know this was happening um, and then when I got up um, yeah so it was <laughs> It was interesting. It was interesting. I felt the pain initially when I got up. It started really getting bad. And she was asking me what the pain level is right now. And I told her it's about a six or seven or six or something like that. So um, once she got the wheelchair and I was able to get myself out of the bed, um, the pain started to subside a little bit because of the nerve block that they gave. Um, <clears throat> and they wheeled me and my parents were there to pick me up and um, gave me some instructions um, as far as what to do when I get home um, what did they say they said as soon as I get home because I got home at around 4.30 or 5 o'clock they said as soon as you get home start taking the oxycodone um, that they prescribed for me um, by 8 o'clock every 4 hours so I took it took one at 8 and took the other one at 12 and then I went to sleep didn't feel any pain um, which is the goal not to feel any pain because I don't like feeling pain to be honest um, my, my pain threshold is pretty is at the pretty high no it's yeah I just can't take pain my pain level tolerance is not that great um, but, um, they, I went to sleep and then I just started having major hiccups at around 3 a.m. in the morning. So that woke me up and I had hiccups nonstop and I'm just like, what is going on? So that woke me up and I would hiccup every five seconds, literally try holding my breath, try drinking water, cold water or room temperature water. None of that worked, but I ended up going back to sleep somehow. 
um, at around five, <clears throat> and then woke up after nine this morning. Still hiccuping like crazy. Um, got my crutches, hopped over into the bathroom to at least wash my face, which is a pretty challenging thing now that I'm I can't put any pressure on the knee I had surgery on. So it's usually my left leg doing all the work and I'm on my toes with my right leg. Um, and that, that that's pretty tiring. So I had to wash my face really quick and brush my teeth, kind of lean forward towards the sink, on the sink, so I can not feel as tired and get some relief. And it worked out. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm, I'm here. I just took a pill, oxycodone pill. Um, I think I'll be here for a pretty long time. Um, I just got a call from the doctor's office asking me how I am. I'm good. Um, so I really appreciate you guys. The reason why I sound like this is because of the position I'm in. I'm pretty chill and relaxed, so I sound like I have no voice or it sounds like I'm in pain but I'm not um, but I, I'm pretty good man I'm I'm all right I'm chilling you know like a villain on penicillin but on oxido oxidone <laughs> in this case so yeah it's uh it's gonna be a, a long time before I'm able to be mobile um, I can't wait because I'm not used to being stationary for so long I'm always on the go. Always got somewhere to go, something to do. People see. Still young. Um, so yeah, man. You will see more of these videos um, in the near future with of my progress and how I'm doing, how I'm feeling. All right. So thank you once again for watching and tuning in. This is going to be a short video. And I'm going to try to get a little rest. I don't know if I want to rest, but just relax and um, take this time to really think and <clears throat> reevaluate things and how I need to move forward from, from now on, or at least after this is all done with. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Um, yeah, so... Thank you once again. This is the Jamaican at your service, and I'm signing off.